Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. The Tale of Two Gardens. We started this series yesterday looking at the new covenant feast that Jesus introduced to his disciples, a feast of simple bread and wine representing the body of Christ and the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. Jesus introduced a feast called communion that represents something that was going to happen. The biggest Jewish feast, the Feast of the Passover, was also celebrated for the first time while they were still in Egypt, but future celebrations were commemorative of them being emancipated from slavery in Egypt. Today, we have left the upper room, and our next stop is the Garden of Gethsemane. I have been there, and it is a little garden with lots of olive trees pretty much like where Jesus went that night with his disciples. All four gospel writers included this stop in their accounts of the sufferings of Christ. There was another garden back in the beginning of human history, the Garden of Eden. We read that God made the man and placed him in this idyllic garden to take care of it. There was a special tree that God told him about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He was told not to eat its fruit because the consequence would be death. This garden was a place of romance. God later made a woman and brought her to the garden Nur, and they got married right there in their garden home. One day, she encountered a most despicable visitor who lied and persuaded the new wife to eat the fruit from the forbidden tree. The garden was instantly defiled. The people who lived in the garden were defiled. The whole human race was defiled. It started in the Garden of Eden that fateful day when Satan, disguised as a serpent, turned up and all hell broke loose, no pun intended, right there in the Garden of Eden. God visited the first couple that day for the last time. He knew what had happened and he cursed the serpent and placed an enmity between Satan and the offspring of the woman. That enmity would end up in, cr in the crushing of the head of the serpent's head and bruising of the heel of the woman's offspring. God cursed the ground because of the man's sin that the earth would pr produce thorns and thistles, and when man died, his remains would go back to the ground. God drove the man and the woman from the Garden of Eden. Here comes Jesus, the Son of God, as the Redeemer, and he and his disciples had communion to celebrate the death that was to come. That death was to redeem the descendants of Adam and Eve who did that egregious deed back in the Garden of Eden. Now we see Jesus coming to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is not like the song which talks about walking and talking with Jesus in the garden. This was a garden visit of pain and anguish. The sin that Adam and Eve committed brought brought death on the whole human race, the end of relationship with God. Here is Jesus alone in his anguish in the Garden of Eden, as he will be dying to correct the death that the human race inherited from the event that happened in the first garden. No wonder Jesus prayed in the garden and while he prayed, the weight of what happened in the first garden bore heavily on him. He prayed for his father to remove the burden as if it's an option. But he knew that it was no coincidence that he is in a garden without support from his disciples who fell asleep. The first garden was a place of life and joy and happiness until Satan turned up and wrecked the whole human race. 
on this night, there is gloom hanging over the Garden of Gethsemane as the Son of God was about to, to be crucified and the anguish and pain of what was to come began to weigh on him heavily right there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Meanwhile, Jesus was sorrowful. Three times he prayed in agony. Abba Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Mark 14 and verse 36. Such was the weight he was carrying. His heart was heavy. But Jesus had to go through the garden because the garden was the second stop of the journey he was on that night that would lead to his death the next morning, a death that was to remove the penalty of death on all mankind that was pronounced back in the garden of Eden. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45, we read about the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden and the second Adam prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane that the penalty of that sin caused by the first Adam that was passed on to every human being be taken from him. But he, Jesus, resigned himself and said, it is not my will but yours be done. Jesus prayed about the bitter cup that was being given to him, the cup of sin and iniquity of the whole world. He really prayed three times for his father to remove this cup. The first Adam sinned and received a sentence of death on him and the whole human race right there in the Garden of Eden. The second Adam came to the Garden of Gethsemane and committed himself to bear the sins of the world in his body so that the curse that God had pronounced over humans in the Garden of Eden would be forgiven and the death penalty would give place to eternal life. One more thing happened in the garden. Which garden? <laughs> I was going to talk about Judas Knowing that Jesus would normally go to this garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, with his disciples. So this was where Jesus was betrayed by a kiss from Judas. There was a betrayal of a different sort in the Garden of Eden. God had told Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan betrayed them and led them to believe that they could be like gods right there in the Garden of Eden. Jesus was betrayed by one of his very own disciples, betrayed and arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. The relationship between God and the first Adam ended painfully in the Garden of Eden. The process of restoration of the relationship between God and humanity started with the second Adam in the Garden of Eden, where he was betrayed and arrested. Jesus experienced anguish and pain. The Bible said an angel from heaven appeared to him and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Luke 22 verses 43 to 44. Today, you are sitting in one of the gardens. Mm -hmm. You might still be in the Garden of Eden, which represents the site of the first sin man committed and where God pronounced a curse of death on the whole human race. But you don't have to stay there. Maybe you are in the Garden of Gethsemane, watching from a distance what Jesus just went through, including being betrayed and arrested. And as you see him being led away, can you see that he is going to die for you, to save you from the curse that was pronounced on you in the Garden of Eden? Will you accept the gift of eternal life that will come about because Jesus is about to drink the bitter cup so that you can receive life, life that was lost in the Garden of Eden, but has been restored to us through the death of Jesus? 
Today we stopped at the Garden of Gethsemane, and we saw him in anguish and pain. But we moved on where we will see more anguish and more pain as Jesus will die to set you free, to be continued.